why are we talking about young people on International Women's Day or International Women's Day in, in two days' time? And the really important thing is because there are a lot of young people in the world. As much as we may have an ageing population, 26% of the world's population are under the age of 15 and nearly 50% are under the age of 25. And many of them are vulnerable. And in particular, the ones that are vulnerable are invariably young women. Because young women in many of the communities and societies that we talk about have less opportunity. Less opportunity to education, less opportunity to health care, less opportunity to the kind of information that makes it they are protected from unwanted pregnancy and unwanted sexual um, interest and assault. So these are the really key things. Women are more vulnerable and young women are more vulnerable than men. So why do we worry or why do we think about it? Once upon a time, adolescence was just sort of thought as this bit that you go through that as a parent of three young adults now who went through adolescence that you wished would hurry up and go away. <laughs> but it's actually a really important and informative stage of people's lives. In Australia and worldwide, typically it involves completing school and transitioning into adulthood, into the workforce, into study. And as I said, it's increasingly recognised that this is a period where there is considerable physical development, mental development and social development going on. Major changes happen in their social networks and they begin to take risk behaviours that some we really like and others we wish they wouldn't. And I think this is a really important component of our work. Young people will have sex. The median age of sexual onset is 16. Young people will drink. Young people will take drugs. Young people will watch pornography, and they will sex, they will do all of these things. And sometimes we wish they wouldn't, but they do. And our job is to work out which is the bits that's okay, which are the bits that might be causing considerable harm. And these risks can be also different to what we expect. So that young people in developing countries, their risk, as well as sex and drugs and alcohol, the standard ones, motor car accidents are the biggest killers of young people in many places globally. And again, how do we think about that to reduce risk in them? So we take, undertake work in Australia, and Megan will speak to that. We undertake work in PNG and Myanmar as well. Really important work, trying to understand and measure risk. This work is vitally important, and as I said, is impacting and improving the health of young people in the short term risk. But also we know that if we keep well young people, the trajectory into adulthood, the things that we do in our adolescence impact on our health in our adulthood, so it has this longer term benefit. So it's why, so why are we talking about it today? Well, we can't do this work without funding and support, and we receive and we thank you for the generous support we receive from many places, but there are often gaps in our funding, and it's particularly difficult to get small seed grants to start projects to inform future work. 